Hi, this is Carolyn, and I'm here with Erin, and we are thrilled to have Amanda here with us tonight. Amanda is the captain of the team that won na- the national championships for 18 and over and 40 and over. So both of them. I don't even understand that, Erin. It's amazing. That's I know. amazing. That's amazing. I have I mean, a million questions because I, I, it never happened to us. <laughs> it never happened to us. <laughs> Okay, I'll start with the first one. So, Amanda, can you tell us where your team is located and why you started playing tennis as an adult? Okay, so our team is located in Orlando, Florida, and we actually play out of the USDA National Campus. Ah, so wow, a great big facility, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we um we've been together as a team for two years, but all of these ladies are basically um, in the women's league, like a local league that we have. Not USTA, it's just a local league. And I met most of them through that league. And then um, that was like five years ago, we started playing together and I either played with them or against them. Uh. <laughs> yeah. um, but over <laughs> over the last three years or so, we kind of bonded. And then I started this team two years ago. Um, we won our state two years ago, but because of COVID, there was no nationals. So they let us stay together. Um, and then we did it again this year. So I have a question about that because each region is different, each sectional, I, mm-hmm. I guess. So we're in the Southern section, but I think you're in a section all by yourself, right? We is are. Florida not part of Southern? No. Yeah. So, did yeah, you- Florida's all by itself and they right. all, we all come to the national campus for sectionals every year. Okay. So you, that was going to be one of my questions because if we, so Carolyn and I are, um, play out of North Carolina and our Southern district is made up of six states or something like that. And, um, is it that many? Okay. But it doesn't include Florida. Yeah. Yeah, Um, (laughs) So our states, you know, we have our, our state championship in North Carolina and then it goes on to, um, I think depending, I guess we're talking spring. So I think it goes on to Alabama and then I don't remember where nationals is because, like I said, we've never made it to nationals. But um, so Florida is you are kind of on your own island and then yeah. you play. Does that mean if you win your local um, area, then you immediately go on to states, which is I'm, I guess I'm confused about that. Yeah, so we don't have what we call states. states. We have what okay. we call sectionals, which is the whole entire state of Florida. Right. Um, okay. But we have playoffs within our county. Okay. So we're part of Orange Seminole County. So we normally have a day and night playoff. Um, so we'll have the day league, we'll play against the night league winner. And then that winner of that will go to sectionals. Okay. That makes sense. And then where did you, did, am I, I might be skipping ahead, but where did you go to, go on to nationals then? Is it also in Florida? No. So in nationals, our first one was Arizona. Oh, that's and right. Okay. And then the second one was Oklahoma. Okay. So one was 18 and one was 40. Yes. For 18 over and one was 40. And how many weeks apart? Two weeks. Wow. Yeah. And it was same, a lot of traveling. Did you have, I told you I'd have a million questions. Sorry, Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go ahead. These are great. Carolyn has we some too, believe me. I've we already know gone everything, off, Amanda. I know. I've we already gone everything. off script. So was is your team uh, made up 100% of the same people or do you have a few, you know, here and there that are different? We have eight that are the exact same that were on both teams. And then for our 18 plus team, we had um, two players that aren't 40 yet. Um, And then we also on the 40 plus team, we had a few more players that I added um, beyond the original eight. Gotcha. Okay, back to you, Carolyn. (laughs) That's awesome. I'm sure I have more. <laughs> yeah, no, no. no, you can go to the next question. That's you, Aaron. Um, so um, you talked about how you found your team already. Um, so what was Nationals like? for what's, what's that experience like for people that have never been there before? Well, there was actually only four of us that had ever been before. I had personally not been. Um, but we did have four girls that had been to 3.0 Nationals over the last five, six years. Um, and so they kind of gave us a heads up, but I have never traveled for tennis because all of our sectionals are always local. So we play on our home courts all the time. Um, so this was a huge thing. Just, just being able to get on an airplane and travel for tennis, um, was a huge thing for us and majority of the team. So it was, um, I just remember arriving on that first day and walking onto the captain's meeting and just seeing all the flags, the signs, the banners representing every region, 
Um, it, it was just, it was incredible. That's, that's so cool. Yeah, that's so cool. And I just want to <laughs> say, I, I told Amanda this before um, the podcast started, but when I heard you won 18 and over and 40 and over the national championships for three, five for both, I immediately said, I bet this team is full of self rates and appeals. And I thought it was really crazy that when I looked up to your team, everyone was computer rated. There weren't any self yeah. rates. There weren't any appeals. So that's just amazing yeah. that you guys were able to do that. Yeah. And like I said, it was mainly because we had all been the same rating for over a year before COVID. Um, and then they didn't change ratings. So we all stayed. Uh, we also I have to mention that we had on both teams, I had two to four 3.0s on the team with us as well that actually played at nationals. So that was huge for them to play up to a 3.5 level. Um, but we were, we were such good friends. I was like, you have to come. Mm-hmm. And they did. They wanted to be a part of it. They played. They, I mean, they did fantastic. So I was really proud of them. Yeah, that's really impressive because I know, I know you said, you know, several of you have been that rating for a few years, but Mm -hmm. some people stay at the same rating for years and years and years and never get to that level. So that is really, really impressive. And to have, you know, it wasn't like you had all your three fives at the high end of three five about to be bumped to four oh. You had some four three O's that were on that team playing up. So you must have just gotten really good over COVID and, you know, or played really well as a team together, or it's, it's really impressive in my mind. That was key having, um, strong doubles partnerships, Mm -hmm. uh, going into sectionals and nationals. Um, we had established really good doubles partners. Um, and as long as you find the right partner, um, pretty much on any day you can get, you can beat any team is what I always say. So just the partnerships were great. Yeah, that's great. That's when our teams, we had, um, Two years ago, pre-COVID, the year before that fall, Carolyn and I both had an 18 and 40 over combo team go to states. Mm -hmm. Um, At the same time, we had a lot of overlap too. So, And we went the same weekend. So there was a lot of juggling of who was going to be at what court. But we did. We had um, the team that won, the 40 over team, we had established doubles partners that I don't think we switched hardly at all. Right, Carolyn? I know you weren't on that team, but we we pretty much kept the same doubles partners together. And that, that really is key. Yeah, that's a good. Okay, so we so learned that. Go in with. Sorry, oh, go ahead, Amanda. Sorry. <laughs> so we learned from Amanda. No, I was just saying partners. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and um, also with singles, um, because with eighteen plus, there was two lines of singles, mm-hmm. and um, you have to go in with singles players that are prepared to play singles. Um, a lot of teams seem to rotate their doubles players around. But um, I seemed to go in with uh, designated singles players, and they knew they were going to play once a day. That way, I didn't gas them out. Um, and so that was huge as well. Yeah, that's really smart. So you had a plan. Did you I know? Did. did you kind of know your lineups going into it? Did you? Did I you did. have a pretty good idea? Okay. Or did you? Yeah. I was going to say, because we've talked to other captains. We talked to a, a local captain here that went to states. So she went on to nationals as well, but she. Yeah, ha- really it. had a plan. Yeah, she really mm-hmm. had a plan going into it. And we've had people from other teams where they've maybe set their first lineups and they get down there and then they kind of feel things out and see how mm-hmm. things are going. And that that um, uh, way of doing business seems to be <laughs> um, a little bit harder on the whole team because nobody knows whether they're playing or not. And then it you know stresses the captain out because the captain sort of has these secrets of like what her plan is. You know, yeah. so it, it, we have learned, I mean, just, just doing this podcast and interviewing several people, I think we've learned the best way to do it is really have a good plan going, going into it. Even if you, you if you have to switch something, you know, if somebody gets hurt mm-hmm. or something doesn't work out, but it sounds like you did just what this other woman did where they were really successful you once really got to that to. level. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I think it was Tuesday before we left on the Thursday, I posted the first four matches um, cause we had our schedule for the first, for the, like, basically the round robin, um, format. And so I, I went ahead, I did a re- little research, um, on the team. So I kind of knew what the strongest, um, areas would be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I kind of planned my lineups around that. And so everybody knew exactly what day they were going to play for at least the first two days. That's great. That's right. And you said you did a little research. What did you do to research the other teams? Well, it's, it's not easy. Um, it's not like, um, with com- some of our counties in Florida, um, it's, you know, there's, there's, they're much stronger counties. And so you can kind of tell going into it, 
But this was really hard because the teams were spread out so far and there's nothing to compare to. So I did go back to the last two years of nationals for both age groups and kind of look to see which areas were in the top four um, going into the last day. And so I kind of had an idea of what areas to look out for. But there's no, there really is no way to do any kind of research. I, I kind of picked to see if the teams had strong singles, like if they had designated singles players. So then I knew, okay, that person plays singles a lot or if they rotated some of their doubles players into singles. So that's really the only thing I could do. Yeah, that's really difficult. It's hard enough on a state level, let alone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let alone on a national level. Yeah. Did you look at like tennisrecord.com or UTR, or any of like those tennis rating websites before going? Um, I did before states, but I did not before nationals because I did not want to psych myself out. Um, I mean, looking at all of our ratings, I knew we were at the higher, most of us are at the higher end of 3.5. Um, I, d- I didn't want to go in and compare numbers with ours. So I tended to stay away from the numbers before nationals, but I did do that for state. That's great. Do you want to ask about flipping courts, Carolyn? Oh, yeah. Um, So we talked about you you did for, I guess, for states, look at numbers for your own team. Did you flip courts? Did you look at other teams and say, well, they normally flip. So I'm going to flip. Did you do any of that or did you play straight up throughout? So I from from when we did sectionals through nationals, um, I don't like to be predictable. Um, I do feel like all of our doubles lines are equally strong. Mm -hmm. So I rotated every match. I never kept the same lineup in the same order. Um, We had three doubles pairs that tended to stay together and I would call them pretty even. And so I just rotated them and then I would randomly throw in a different doubles pair each, each match. Um, So nobody really had any idea where anybody was going to land. Oh, that's yeah, smart. That's smart. That's yeah. <laughs> that's what we did. Um, we did a couple years ago when we went for three five states because we had the same thing. We had we Carol and I just recorded recently, and I said for that team that I captain, we didn't really have a double. It was I think our uh, topic was like about not getting your feelings hurt, and part of that was like what line you play on. Yeah, you know, one whether you're doubles one, two, or three, and that doesn't necessarily speak to someone's ability or lack thereof. Um, Because I had just like you, I had like, I didn't really have a doubles one, two and three, I had pretty much all doubles ones, you know, which is why we made it all the way to the semifinal. Um, But it was sort of that same situation, like we could just put anyone on any court, you know, because everybody was equally as strong, which is that's a really good thing to have on a team. And that's clearly why you made it all the way to nationals, because (laughs) you have even across the board. (laughs) Yeah, and I don't I don't honestly think a lot of teams looked at it as one, two, three strength wise. I think it was just straight up three doubles. Um and so I don't know if that's if other areas think of it that way, but like I guess in Florida we don't seem to look at it like the strongest is one, you know, two, and then three. It's just three doubles, two singles, yeah. same thing. That's how we should look at it. Because right. then nobody maybe yeah. nobody's feelings would get hurt. I know. That, <laughs> right, that is one of the things about captaining. Yes. Is you don't I know, have yeah. feelings. I know. I'm sure we could have you on for lots of captaining episodes too. <laughs> yeah. 